Okay, thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I cannot uh, enable my video because of the limitation of the bandwidth. So let me start about uh, my presentation is on uh, the status of the policy and uh, the national info soil information system. Uh, before I go to the policy and the database, uh, I would like to go through the pre-initiative of the policy and the modern information system. Before the initiatives of the, the two projects, uh, that is the policy and the uh, national information system or the modern information system for soil, uh, as you know, these are the rationales, uh, accurate and update data, date, update information about soil fertility, sorry, is critical, as you know, for developing to smart policies. And uh, in particular, in our country, we have uh, faced a challenge in food security and uh, uh, the global problem, as you know, the climate change mitigation. So because of this, we need the soil data and information in a proper and in, in standard way. Okay, so before the Ethiosis project, we have some initiatives, some data collection uh, in the country. You can see the type of study and the objectives, the year. But this data is not properly handled or managed or stored. That's the uh, critical problem. And uh, as a result, for the, for the past five decades, we are using blanket fertilizer application recommendation. Uh, the only nutrient supply to crops was limited to nitrogen and phosphorus. And even the depth soil fertility information was constrained. And there was no fertilizer policy and recommendation. As a result, a major initiative in 2012 was uh, launched by the name ETO CIS project. Go ahead. So in the ETO CIS project, you can see these are the components of the ethiosis projects. The first one is soil sampling gathering, and the second one, soil processing, laboratory analysis, output, and so on. Soil library. So this data collection, everything was conducted through the state-of-the-art technology, employing remote sensing satellite technology. But as a result, when we have this old data, even the output, at the end, when we, when when we reach in the information distribution, there are two questions that was raised. The first one is, how can the data be shared? This initiates the policy. The second one is the infrastructure. There was a data, but there was no proper infrastructure. So at this time, even the national information system has emerged. This was the initiative for the two. So in this uh, uh, ethiosis, we have in our hands or at the, uh, as a standalone uh, uh, server, 748 districts and 64 point survey in our hands nowadays. And you can see from uh, this, we have 50,000 soil samples collected and uh, we have 80,000 soil samples are collected here for the soil fertility survey. This is for confluence point. And machine learning is applied. And this all is up, uh, processed. And we have even generated different maps for different districts. So as, as I have mentioned previously, due to this data, availability of data, the problem of sharing, this uh, soil and agronomy data sharing policy was launched. Uh, I will not go through the policy one by one because it's not rectified yet, uh, final rectified, but I will, I will just go through the main, main points. The scope, 
the policy scope. The policy scope states that this policy is includes all the soil and agronomy data, including even the pre-existing data. This is the first one. Again, the policy is applied to all, including the non-government organizations. And it's designed through the principle called FAIR, which recommends that it should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And the policy is ordered by Ministry of Agriculture on the behalf of the government. Let's go. The purpose, as you know, as everybody understands is, by implementing this policy, we can, we can prevent duplication of effort in collecting and analyzing policy, soil information and agronomy data. And the, at the same time, the policy will ensure up-to-date soil agronomy data for policymakers to make or to formulate agriculture policy recommendations. And the policy is intended, again, to deliver value to farmers. And it uses different standardizations, including some international standard data. Continue. So the policy implementation, we have the policy at the same time, uh, we have developed an implementation, a policy implementation guide to support the, implement, the policy implementation. Uh, so we have the manual at the same time. Yeah. So we have, we have, we have. I, I think we have developed policy implementation guide to support the policy. Uh, this is a line by line implementation of the policy. The de detail, de it details all the policy, uh, the fair everything policy in details. Uh, but investment will be required to deliver this policy. Uh, investment means investment in, in technology and in human capacity, in advocacy, and so on. The policy will be enforced for three years. That's the, the general idea of the policy. But we will not uh, uh, present the whole policy because it's already now, since uh, the, the policy is not rectified, uh, but uh, we expect, uh, since it's already uh, in the Ministry of Management, uh, Ministry of Agriculture Management Committee, so we, we expect this to be approved shortly. And uh, at the same time, I forgot something. Every policy, and including the guideline, is translated in Amharic. This is what is the status of the policy. Uh, let's go. So let, let me now uh, go to the major presentation of mine today, the National Soil Information System. Uh, as you know, the National Soil Information System uh, was launched uh, before one year, but um, uh, we expect, we were expecting this system to go live last February. Uh, we are now six months behind the schedule. This is due to, first of all, the COVID, of course, and at the same time, uh, uh, we have to accept, we have to admit sometimes, you know, there was no proper mitigation strategy. Uh, one of the champion of the ETOCs has left, the core or the primary focal person for this project has left. So at that time we had some mess. So this, because of this, the, the go live of this uh, database was delayed. We have to admit. Uh, the component of the, the component of the, Database is like this, as you can see from the screen. We have the content management. The content management is the landing page. All the public information regarding the soil will be available in the content management. In the content management, all information will be public. No login, no authentication. 
and we have a soil collection module soil collection module and the second one is laboratory analysis we have all have their their own virtual sites for example if for a survey we have a soil collection site for a laboratory technician we have a laboratory site and so on for the output and so on this is uh, the whole scope and we have at the same time soil tracking all the soil samples from the ground all the way to the library will be tracked will be easily tracked the system has tracking system and they have notification for example if the soil is collected then send to the laboratory when the soil collected is approved by the surveyor head then it will go automatically to the laboratory and the laboratory technician or head will be notified so it has notification and soil tracking system okay so this is the login page uh, this is a login page uh, we have a landing page that just i missed i jumped that uh, page the the landing page is a public page but after that we have a login page this is an authentication for those who are uh, authorized they can log in through this uh, window next for example we have here uh, the laboratory module so as you may understand we have different laboratories so virtually we have to create laboratories here the, the laboratory profile we create all the laboratory their location and so on so this is how we can create this is a window for the laboratory and the testing type this is another object very important object because we have different test types we have to create as one object the laboratory laboratory test types and at the same time we have the user management as you know for uh, this is standard for all uh, type of large uh, scale information systems we have a create role we have different roles, roles here uh, i have to discuss because this is very important we don't have a predefined roles we can customize roles so uh, this is uh, one of the advantage of this system we can create roles we can have uh, some uh, privilege for uh, someone and so on. this this is how we create roles so after having a role different roles then we can create uh, users of course uh, this is how when the create uh, the users register to the system then we can assign to the roles they can create online they can register to the system then when they are valid when the administrator verifies whether they are valid or not then assigns a role next the other important thing is survey forms for data collection we have an electronic survey form here and uh, like that of the roles the the forms are not predefined we can create fields we can link fields with the forms and so on. Here you can see that we are creating fields for the forms. We can here, what are the code and so on. You can see uh, topography, elevation, date of sampling. This is created by anyone. It's possible. The second one is creating a, a form. We have created a field for the form before. Then what we can do is now we can add these fields that have been created to the to the forms for example here soil characterization form you can count here there is a count here number of fields for this are 10 so you can add uh, fields you can read these fields as you like that's how you can customize the form so this is uh, for example the the how you link the surveyor with here you can see uh, the how you can tag the uh, surveyor with the locations you can see here these are the assigned servers and the assigned surveyors and so on next then when you assign the forms to surveyors who are in the field then the surveyors in the field 
will have a tablet or a mobile, they can log into the system. Of course, they have to create first. Uh, they have to be uh, validated and so on. They have to go all to the processes. Then they can use their username here and password. They can log in. Then they will have this landing page for them. Here, fill blank forms, edit blank forms, finalize forms, and so on. You can see. Next. <coughs> Here, then the same the same tablet, the same uh, user. After that, they can have sample collection form. These are the forms that is sent or assigned to this particular surveyor. Then, when they <coughs> open this sample collection form, it's, it's a dummy data, by the way. Then this will be the fields. Scan sample plot, upload image, sample site, site name, upload image, here, sorry, surveyor name, soil location, and so on. So by clicking each, each field, it ca they can easily, for example, for the scan, they can easily scan the bug bar number, and so on. Go ahead. You can see here. Now the 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 device is scanning the barcode. This is for identification of that soil sample. And they can enter the surveyor name and so on. This is how they can add the, the fields. They can fill the the forms. Go ahead. And so on. Even the location, they can take the location and upload the image. This is how they proceed. Go ahead. Then when they finalize, <coughs> when they, they are sure, then they will say, they will click this one, go to end. If they have some mistakes of if they want to go back, go to start. This is go to end. Then the next will be the next. Yeah, the next will be like this. This data are already finalized. Finalized or completed. Then you can, here you can see, sorry. Back. Back one. Okay. Then you can, these are the field or the completed forms, then if they want to send, because the completed forms has to go to the administrator or to the surveyor head for verification. So they have to even can select all, they can select all by this, then they can send, or they can select by one by one. When they send, then automatically they will have a report on their, on their device that these forms are sent already to the uh, administrator, to the administrator of the survey, of course. Go ahead. So this, this page again is for admin, admin, surveyor admin. So he will receive all the completed form and he can check, he can check. That means. Then, uh, when there is updates, he can update, or there is, if he wants to reset, to resend again, back if there is some error and so on by the server, either he can reset or he can update. If some information has to be updated by himself or by herself, he can update the data. It's possible. Okay, go ahead. Then the, the administrator, when the, the, when the forms are completed, uh, cleaned everything, then it will send, it will approve it. When the completed forms are approved, then it will go automatically to the laboratory as it is treated. Okay? Then the laboratory will see all the sent forms. Then they can test 
the testing process will start. So this is, everything is virtual. It's good. When they click the approve, then it will go automatically to the laboratory. Go ahead. So, of course, for uh, the laboratory, at the same time, they have the database, uh, their own data, data management system. So when they process the, the, pro, the results, the test result, they can either key from the keyboard here, they can put the pH and so on, the results, or if they have their own Excel version or PDF version, whatever, they can here upload. Here they can browse and upload any version. It could be PDF, Excel, and CSP, and so on. This is possible. Go ahead. <coughs> so approval and rejection of lab results. This is again done in the laboratory. Here you verify. It says verified, so it's possible to approve and reject lab results in the system. Go ahead. Then finally, the library. When the test result is approved, then it will be sent to archive automatically. Then the archive, the archive, the library itself will have a module to set the location of each soil sample. You can see here rack number, shelf number, and so on, drawer, and so on. This is available in the database as one module. Okay, when it goes from the lab to the library, then automatically the archive mechanism will be done by the uh, database system itself. That's how it's archived. Go ahead. Then the next process will be, now we have the lab result. Uh, uh, the next will be, the important will be the output generation by using some uh, machine learning. So here, the system uh, uh, uses two, two options. The first option is we plug in or the system plug in is the NIM by itself. The system has the NIM, but uh, as you know, NIM is an open source. So it's not reliable. So you can here, you can automatically schedule the NIM in the system itself. Then sometimes it may be successful, as you can see here, scheduler starts complete. This is successful for this, uh, for this generation, that means for this field. Here again, completed this failure. Sometimes it could fail because we cannot rely because it's an open source, as I have told you. So what we can do is the failure, the failure status, we have to download to our workstation, to our workstation. So process and upload the system again. Okay, that's how it's, it's, it's designed. Because the NIM, as you know, is, is, not, is uh, an open source. Go ahead. So uh, as I have told you, upload NIM if it fails, if the scheduler fails for some cases, what we can do is upload and download. Download and upload, of course. We download from the system the, the result of the lab, then we process it by NIM of, of the system, then we upload it to the system again, the result. Go ahead. The same for scheduler for uh, ML, for uh, the, the, R, the R script, the same. We have the scheduler at the same time for the manual option. For, the, for uh, if the scheduler fails, what we can do is we have to work it out offline and upload it, the result. Okay, next. Then the, the last one will be cartography uh, mapping. 
upload the image and so on. The result, when you have the result, the ML algorithm output will be up the input for this, then maps will be generated here. Next. Then, uh, this, this is the process, the final output. We have the final output. How do we distribute the data? How do we, how do we distribute the information or the reports? So we have here, for example, this is one reporting mechanism. We have here soil fertility status map, soil fertilizer recommended map, soil sample collection map. We have different uh, reporting mechanism. Go ahead. For example, here we have soil, soil fertility. Before that. We have we have one more. I think we jump it to. Is it next? Next, maybe. Yeah, here you can you can have. Okay, let's go back anyway. Sorry. So you can see here some uh, maps. This is, I think, uh, a map for Tigray. So here you can see calcium carbonate in Tigray, how it looks like, calcium to magnesium in Tigray, how it looks like, iron and so on. So we have such type of reports and we have soil, this is soil fertility maps. And we have, next, next, next. So you can download even, you have, uh, it's possible to download by simply clicking, then it will be downloaded to your, to your desktop or laptop. Next. The same, we have, again, soil fertilizer maps. We have different, as per uh, the data availability, we have uh, the soil fertilizer maps. You can see here. Next. Let's say here is a detail. The detail, this is a, I think the regional, and this is, it goes up to Warada level, I think. Next. Okay, the last one is, what, what is the status now? Where we are now? And the way forward. Uh, Currently, we are under deployment. We start deploying the system uh, since yesterday, I can say. Uh, so after deploying the system, the next will be, we will officially launch the system. Then next will be, I forget here, the next will be, we migrate, we will migrate all the data in ethiosis because the format is the same. So the migration will not be is will not be very difficult. So we will migrate all the data that I have mentioned it already, which is collected in the ethiosis project. Then after our plan is to provide intensive uh, training across the country for potential users that will. Uh, of course the. Next, the, uh, regarding the policies, again, after the approval of the policy, we will have an awareness program to all stakeholders and actors. Uh, and finally, and most importantly, uh, I would like to thank uh, ATA for uh, the project, of course, for the development of the national same information and for the policy and every support GIZ has a lot, sorry, uh, has, has contributed both technical and, and financial support for both the project for the national soil information in every gaps GIZ was filling and as, at the same time for the policy, uh, it, it, it had very important contribution. 
So I would like, uh, on behalf of the Minister of Agriculture and personally, to thank the IZ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tigay. That was a very, very informative and interesting presentation. Um, just, um, yeah, so sorry about that. Mr. Tigay is, works in the IT department of the Ministry of Agriculture. Mr. Tigay, can you just tell us what is your role, what has been your role in the development of the policy and this, the soil information service? What, what is your position in the, in the IT department and the work you do? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I forget to introduce myself. Uh, my role was uh, advisor or consultant for the development of national soil information system. Uh, I was a counter consultant for the international firm, which is developing the system. It's an international firm. So I'm a counter consultant advising the Ministry of Agriculture in the milestones of each process of the national soil information. That's my role. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, colleagues. There was a lot of um, activity in the chat box. So I'm just going to uh, ask you, Mr. Tegai, to un address some of the questions. Some were answered by um, our colleagues, but just for the sake for, of everyone, perhaps who was not following on the chat. Um, could you tell us what is the expected timeline to get the policy ratified? Uh, shall I answer it? Okay. Uh, the policy, you know, when we have the English version of the policy, we have presented to the management, then uh, they uh, need the Amharic transition, translation. So what we did is automatically we translated it by the support of GIZ. Then we have uh, submitted already both the versions english and uh, so we are waiting so it's very difficult to, for me to tell you because it's under the management the, the ministry has to be involved the ministry all the all the state ministries so it's very difficult but it is on the table of the management committee that's uh, the, co the committee that can that is the, what i can say Okay, um, there was a question here from Mr. Lema, who was saying, what about other, other stakeholders, users, individuals, students, researchers, is the policy only uh, for policy makers? Uh, no, the policy is for all actors. Students are at the same time actors. So everyone is involved because, you know, uh, the policy is about soil, soil collection, soil sharing, and so on. So everybody has a, is an actor, which is in the, in the community of soil, soil and soil information. So the policy is for everyone working in soil environment. Uh, I don't know if it is about the database. The database has different privileges for public and for everyone, for researchers and so on. So we will we'll lead, uh, of course, the policy will lead us to how we can design the privilege. That's what I can say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then there was um, questions around the lifetime of the policy and why it's, be, it's restricted to three years. Could you explain on that? Well, it's uh, because it's dynamic, you know, the world is dynamic, so it's, 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 it's very difficult to have a fixed policy, isn't it? So it does not mean is when three years is uh, finished, it does not mean that it will be completely changed, but it needs some improvement. So because of the dynamism, the dynamic uh, nature, of the soil, the science, the everything, I think uh, three years is enough. I don't know if uh, Lul Saget can help here. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think I, I also tried to answer uh, some of the questions. And uh, I remember we were discussing whether to have three years, five years, or leave it open. So the suggestion from the majority of the team here is three so years can be mentioned, but they also stated we can say this is a live document that will be updated regularly as the need arises, other than mentioning three years. So maybe we can see if there is a need to, to revise, or we may wait these three years for three years, and then during that revision, we may remove the, the mentioning a number of years, so it avoids confusion. Uh, otherwise, I think the suggestion from colleagues, including Kinde uh, from CIMIT, is it would be better to leave it uh, like open, but it indicates that this dynamic the situations globally, nationally, nationally are dynamic, and therefore there will be a regular update as the need arises. So we can mention like that. So I think what you answered is the same as I tried to say in the chat. Thanks. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Rosigan. Okay, um, there's some questions um, around the soil information uh, system service. Um, there's one here about the quality of the data. Um, how is the quality of the data going to be controlled or checked? How will the system handle this? Uh, well, uh, quality issue. Uh, the quality issue, as I have told you, is. Uh, for example, from data collection from the ground, we have two steps, uh, the collector and the approval. So uh, uh, this is one, one aspect. The second one is we use the state of the art technology for data collection, uh, the remote sensing, the satellite image and so on. So this is what we have, the, the system has this only, but otherwise, the quality is, it's two steps, the data collector, and at the same time, the next step is the administrator will validate the data. That's how we validate the data. That's what we have uh, uh, currently. Thank you. Um... Does the um, soil information uh, system have API, APIs for access? That was another question. Hello? When data is being collected, the likelihood of making Mistakes will be minimized because the option that quality. There are two ways of to have suggested maybe the question present and discuss in the web portal presentation. Thanks. My apologies, my internet just dropped. Sorry about that. So internet in the UK also can drop? Yes. <laughs> uh, where, were we? where are we, Dr. Loss again? Uh, so we were answering on the data quality. So a guy comment, I complimented a few things, but the the important thing is we want to we want suggestions because our offer of solutions for that web portal is also not very crystal clear. If the IT person doesn't know whether a certain data has the, the quality that's required, what will happen? You may direct to someone to handle to check, but who is that someone and so on? There are some some things we can clarify. If there are more questions, you can, I don't know, if there are more questions, uh, I think most of them, the key ones, you raise them, but if you think there are more, you maybe end the time, depending on the time you have. Mm -hmm. I think we can, we can do a few more. Um, yeah. 
So there was a question here about um, GPS coordinates. They say, will the soil data have GPS coordinates? If yes, does the system automatically recognize the coordinate systems used during data collection? Answer is yes. Okay, simple yes, great. <laughs> um, there was another question here. Um, is the citizen dashboard for farmers or others? Since it is in English and very technical, how can it, how can it be used? Yeah, our plan uh, is not uh, for farmers, rather for DA, for the development agent. Uh, who are distributed throughout the country, who are helping the farmers, that's our target. It's not the farmer, the farmer itself, the target. So that's why we, we, we have the English version of it. Mm, okay. Um, another question. Is, the internet, is internet connection required to log in? Um, if so, how, how will you manage if there is no internet connection, especially in remote areas? Uh, well, in, 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 in case of data collection, uh, we have offline version for data collection. When, when, when uh, uh, surveyors are in the field, when they are collecting and uh, the data and have to get connected to the server, uh, the, when there is no internet, there is an offline version. In their uh, uh, tablets, we load the mobile version app. Then they can they can stay all the data they can upload. Then automatically, when the internet is restored, then it will synchronize. There is no problem. That's the, for data collection. Otherwise, for the other option, we have a problem yet. We don't have any solution. For example, accessing the server. Uh, when there is no internet, at this stage, we don't have a solution, to be frank. Okay, but for data collection, for the other way, data collection, we have an option, an off offline option. That's the remedy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, I don't see any more questions here. I don't know if you can answer this one, but there was one asking about... Um, if anyone, either you or anyone here, Dr. Wills, can you inform or update on the current status of ESRIC? Maybe Dr. Lewis said that he's better. Mm. Uh, I think Professor Shellam is the one who asked it, so I, I'm not sure. Uh, Professor Shellam, I may. <laughs> We elaborate a bit further because I'm not sure what kind of update is required. Yeah. Is it, so is it like the one which is in uh, Europe or? I don't know. Maybe from the other one is it? Yes. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lusak. I wonder whether this is it like is Ethiopian. Uh, so resource information center. It was supposed to establish and uh, handle all these. And uh, I wonder whether anybody can inform oh. what, what is status today. Okay, Isri, that was Isri. Ah, now I remember. Isri, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Kuflu is uh, to update about that one. I, I, it was, yeah, it was a very big, uh, thing that was moving fast, uh, I think three, four years ago, but now uh, there is no much action, but Kuflu may comment, Kuflu is a guy from the, or Taklu if you have information. Kuflu is not there, Kuflu is the one who, you know, 
Okay, maybe so when we have updates, we will provide. So about no problem. Know. Thank you so much. That's enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. <laughs> we've got Wab Wabne here. Um. Saying, please ask why 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 theosis is so late. Uh, for open for use. Why is it so late for use? Um, you mean ethiosis or root? Ethiosis. He says ethiosis here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you if you if you can take it, Mister Tega. As I have mentioned it, we have two important uh, uh, problems. When we have the data, we have the data. The data is uh, organized everything, but. We had two problems. The first one is the policy. Who is to access the data? And we need the infrastructure, proper information system. That's why we initiate, we initiate the policy, the national soil and the agronomy policy, and at the same time, data sharing policy, and at the same time, the national information system. So then we'll start sharing uh, pro, pro, the, the, the system virtually from where we are okay it will be an web-based system so everybody everyone can access from from uh, anywhere that that will be that that is the reason great okay well i think we can sorry one, uh, maybe one question from uh professor Mr. if you have raised it to you uh, so it says uh, Maybe a guy will comment. Who will be the owner of the database? So I think the database that is presented now is under the ownership of the Ministry of Agriculture. Yeah, the, 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 there is a follow-up question. It says, will this be yeah. by law? Uh, I, I don't know. A guy, do you have comment or you want a, a bit further explanation from Prof? Sorry. The Sorry, what was what is the question? What is the question? No, the what data, is the question? Who will be the owner of the database and will be will it be enacted by law? Like the owner of this database is this and there will be a law associated with it or uh, yeah the, the the Ministry of Agriculture will own the database, will own the means, will host, will host anyway, will own maybe may not be good word will host in the data center of the Ministry of Agriculture, mm -hmm. but different people, different researchers can uh, share their data or can upload their data there, but the policy and the guideline uh, as will be uh, approved next time, will have its own uh, uh, policy laws we have embargo period and so on. So it's very difficult to say that the owner is Ministry of Agriculture, but uh, the, we will manage, the uh, Ministry of Agriculture will manage, but properly to, uh, to the policy, the policy, because the researchers may have a space there, but their data may not be shared. Yeah. There, there will be embargo period and so on. So we have a guideline. The guideline will be, again, approved with the policy. That's that's how we will work with the database. Is it clear, Doctor Professor Mutko? Yeah, I think I think it's okay. If we can discuss later. If there's any uh, Chippo, once more, sorry, uh, Beza from uh, the Arvin. I think she asked it twice, so we have to tackle. She's saying, does the system, uh, the one that the guy presented, have APIs for access? The guy may comment on that. API means application. What What is the API mean? I don't have APIs. Maybe to further uh, explain this one, just the... Uh, what is API? Yeah, usually like... Okay, thank you for your presentation, Sagai. In your presentation, you explained that uh, based on the policy, the system will have different logins for different users, right? 
Yes, so, yes. like when I say API, like for other systems to utilize this data, like for different applications to talk to each other, like that is have like based on permission, based on the policies for other systems to directly access it through the API uh, to get the data, like application level. Uh, I don't know if I understand your question. Uh, the data the database has XML output, CSP output. That's okay. what where we are now. So okay. you can you know you can you can you can use the raw data. For what I mean is you can you can fetch or you can download raw data from the system. We have the option that allows us to take the raw data, not only the reports. Uh, okay. For some researchers, we can provide access so the researchers can take some raw data. For example, raw data in essence, the result of the laboratory. Before it goes to the output, they, they may need that, uh, uh, that result only. So they can, they can download that data. This, we have these options, these features in the system. Okay, thank you. Is it clear? Yes, thank you. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Tegai. I think um, that was very, very a very great session. And thank you, all of you, for the level of interaction. Um, you can always email Mr. Tegai with any more questions that you might have.